Minerals are all around us, but we're not absorbing them. Our soil's already depleted. So when you cook our veggies, the last thing we want to do is cook them in a way that makes it so we're depleting more of them. I'm going to show you the proper ways to cook specific veggies so you retain your nutrient value, but also retain the right amount of minerals so your magnesium levels stay where they need to be. Let's dive in to the specific ways that veggies should be cooked. Because this is what it comes down to. It truly depends on the type of vegetable. And in order to make sense of this entire video, I'm going to reference a couple of studies. This first study was in 2012, and it was published in the Preventative Food Nutrition Journal. What it looked at was red pepper boiling, steaming, stir frying, and roasting. They wanted to measure how many of the phytochemicals and the antioxidants actually remained through various cooking processes. Well, believe it or not, what they actually found through this study, with red peppers in particular, was that stir frying, the highest heat cooking process, retained the most amount of minerals, vitamins, antioxidants, and phytonutrients, whereas boiling and steaming actually caused the red peppers to lose most of their value. Now, we can speculate that it may have to do with the high heat cooking allowing the vegetable to be cooked faster, but there's a little bit more that we have to look at. So the next study that I want to reference is going to break some stuff down that's going to sound contradictory to the first reference, but if you hear me out entirely, it's going to make a lot of sense. So this next study was done in 2008, and it looked at carrots, broccoli, and courgettes. And what they were looking at was, again, how many of the minerals, how many of the phytonutrients, the antioxidants were lost through boiling, steaming, roasting, and stir frying. Well, in this study, they found that boiling and steaming actually retained the most. How can that possibly be? Well, you see, it has to do with the overall types of veggies that you're cooking. So what we end up looking at is the cooking method in relation to the types of vitamins and minerals we're trying to get from a food group. For example, foods that have high amounts of water-soluble vitamins, okay, vitamin C, vitamin B, other phytonutrients and some of the antioxidants, generally end up washing out most of their nutrient profile through boiling and steaming. Yeah, that's totally true. So that means broccoli, that means some of these soft vegetables that don't have a heavy skin. If you steam them or boil them, you're getting rid of those water-soluble vitamins because they go right into the water and get washed away. Now that could be okay if you're making a soup because the vitamins and minerals are going to be retained in the actual soup portion, in the broth. But when it comes time to actually cook them and steam them, you're really just getting a lot of cellulose and fiber, not a whole lot of benefit. Now what about the high heat ones? Because we look at that first study that looked at red peppers. Well, the thing is, red peppers have a high amount of vitamin A, which is a fat-soluble vitamin. So what do we hypothesize here? We start hypothesizing that the fat-soluble vitamins in those vegetables do better with high heat cooking methods that are dry. So we're talking about vegetables that have high levels of vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin D, even some levels of vitamin K. Those are ones that you want to stir fry. And those are the things like the carrots, those are the things like even the beets, those are the things that have the skins on them. Also things like spinach, sweet potatoes, and of course peppers. So those are the kinds of things you want to make sure that you're aware of to stir fry, not necessarily boil. Even if you boil those, you're going to retain some of the fat soluble nutrients, but these are typically veggies that taste better when they're stir fried anyway. Now this may not answer the question entirely because now you have to dive in a little bit deeper every time you eat a vegetable. Okay, what vitamins am I looking to get out of this? But a simple rule of thumb is to really just look at the skin. If it has a thicker layer of skin, like a carrot you would typically peel, or even a cucumber you would typically peel, it usually has a higher level of fat soluble vitamins. Not always the case, you can cross reference on the internet, but that's a general rule of thumb to follow. So now the question that comes to mind, this is one that gets asked almost daily on my channel. That is the world of microwaves. Is it okay to microwave your veggies? Do you get nutrients when you microwave? Well, it's time to reference another study. In a 2009 study published in the Journal of Food Science, get ready for this, it was found that microwaves actually increase the bioavailability of antioxidants and nutrients in vegetables. Yes, believe it or not, when compared to boiling, steaming, roasting, and stir frying, microwaving retained the most nutritional value from the veggies. And get this, it actually increased the availability of antioxidants in those veggies. Literally, by putting it in a microwave, it increased your bioavailability, your ability to absorb the antioxidant effect from these veggies. 
Now, you don't want to just go and microwave everything, okay? You don't want to just microwave all your veggies. Some things we do have to factor in is when something's been frozen and then reheated, it breaks down the cell walls, so it does affect the absorption. The other things we have to factor in is how long it's been sitting in the fridge or how long it's been sitting in the freezer, because those things affect too. And you also want to make sure that if you're putting a veggie in the microwave, that you're not putting it in water, then putting it in the microwave, because then the same thing is going to happen. You're going to microwave it, the water's going to boil, and you're having the same effect of boiling. Microwaving doesn't necessarily preserve or supersede the effects of boiling. Again, not saying go and microwave all of your food, and definitely don't stand one foot away from the microwave while you're microwaving your veggies. But hopefully this video gives some clarification as to what you need to do to get the most out of your veggies, so that you're not just sitting there wondering and microwaving the wrong ones, stir frying the wrong ones, and boiling the wrong ones. It's hard to get your minerals in though. So if you ever need to supplement or make sure that you're getting enough in the right way, check out Jigsaw Health Magnesium and get the most out of your magnesium. Simply because the sustain release technology makes it so that it's like you're eating magnesium rich veggies all day, every day, but without having to chow down on broccoli and almonds 24 seven. So click on the link and be sure to check it out and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching Jigsaw.